Hello guys, Svetlana Shlapak, the founder of UKVisaSuccess.com is here. Uh, since I've published my first uh, video explaining the new UK's uh, points-based immigration routes, I've received a number of inquiries because uh, people didn't know how everything works. So what I thought would be helpful for you guys if I create another video where I will be giving you a case scenarios showing you how this will work in practice. So let us begin. Guys, but before I give examples showing how the skilled workers can score their marks, I would like to summarize the eligibility requirements which any person who is not a British citizen and who wants to enter the UK to work will need to satisfy. So we have uh, tradable and non-tradable points. Anyone who wants to enter the UK will need to score a maximum of 70 points or 70 marks and 50 of those are mandatory. So this means that you cannot mix and match these points and you have to score them all. So the first one is you will need to have a job offer from the uh, home office a registered approved sponsor and you will get 20 marks for that and then you'll need to prove that your uh, job offer is at the appropriate skill level again that's 20 marks for that and finally you'll need to meet the English language requirements so this can be met in a variety of ways but one of, the, of these ways is uh, by proving that you have passed the test at the level of at least B1 or you can be from a majority English speaking country so that will be 10 points as well alternatively you can prove that you have a bachelor or master's degree or above in the uk then we have a tradable points. so here you can mix and match so a person who for example as you can see here has a phd in a subject relevant to the job they can get uh, 10 points and also where a person has a salary of at least at uh, 23,040 pounds or at least 90 percent of the going rate then they will get 10 uh, points for that uh, if a job is in a, or on a shortage of occupation list and that is 20 points and then where we have a salary of at least 20,480 pounds if the job is in the health and education sector or some other public service occupations and this is with exception of nurses or midwives who can get even a lower salary for the first eight months. If you'd like to know more, please uh, watch my previous videos where I explain uh, the circumstances. And the next one is where we have a salary of at least £25,600 or at uh, the uh, going rate for that profession. You will be able to get a 20 marks straight away if you have a PhD in a STEM subject. And in this video, I'll explain what these are. Finally, if the applicant is a new entrant to the labor market. Okay, so the first uh, case scenario, the first example of uh, will be uh, the lab uh, technician uh, case. So let's say Ben is a skilled worker from Canada. He has a PhD degree in chemistry and he wants to come to the UK to work as a lab uh, technician uh, in the chemistry field. Uh, the Home Office uh, registered Ben's employer and the sponsor is inviting uh, him to work here in the UK at the salary of 20,000 and 700 pounds gross per year. Will he qualify? Let us analyze this case step by step. The first step is to see whether or not Ben can score 50 mandatory points. So we know that Ben has got a job offer, so he will be able to score 20 marks for that. And he meets these requirements also because uh, the sponsor is a home office a registered sponsor. Guys, you need to remember that if uh, the sponsor is not a registered with a home office, unfortunately, you will not be able to score these 20 marks. Uh, the second uh, requirement is that the job is at the appropriate skills level, so that's 20 marks. We also, uh, Ben seems to also meet this requirement because the home office classes, laboratory analysis, laboratory technicians, uh, mandatory laboratory assistants, scientific technicians and water testers as laboratory technicians. A laboratory technicians job is a job at the appropriate skills level. So that's another 20 marks for ban. And finally, uh, to score 20 mandatory marks um, for the English language, all he needs to do here, he'll need to prove that he is 
und at the majority English speaking country list. So that is a success for step number one because he immediately scored 50 mandatory points. Uh, the second step will be to check if Ben can score 20 non-mandatory or they are also called uh, tradable marks. Uh, let us have a look. The first question we need to ask is the salary rate at the level of at least 25,600 pounds or above the going rate for that profession. If it is, then that's 20 marks and you don't need to go any further. But if it's not, then the next question you need to ask is, is the salary above the minimum salary rate of 20,480 pounds? If no, if the answer is no, then the application will unfortunately fail. If it is yes, then the next question we need to ask is the salary at the level of the going rate for that profession. If not, is it at at least 75% from the going rate? If it is not a 75% from the going rate, this means that unfortunately, again, the application will be refused. If it is yes, then we can proceed. And the final question which we may ask with regards to the salary, is this occupation on the shortage occupation list. If it is, then the applicants will be able to score 20 marks. Okay, applying the law to the facts, we know that a band salary is below 25,000 and 600 pounds. It means that he cannot score marks for the salary. However, we also know that uh, this is above the minimum salary rate of 20,000 and 480 pounds gross a year. So then we need to check if the salary is above uh, the uh, going rate for that profession. The going rate uh, for laboratory technicians is £18,200 or at least £8.97 per hour. Guys, in case you wonder where I get all this information from, it is from the immigration rules from Annex E and uh, you can get your own copy of this table if you ask for it at UK Visa Success dot com forward slash new pbs is completely free and it will be with you within the next 60 seconds so the fact that band salary is above the going rate for this profession means that he can still score 20 tradable points elsewhere to be eligible uh, to get this type of visa so let us have a look um, at where he can score these uh, points this is a table of tradable points we need to check where our band can score 20 extra points. As you can see, he can get these uh, points by proving that he has a PhD in chemistry, which is one of the STEM subjects. A STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and uh, mathematics, and Ben's PhD will be relevant to his profession. It's really important to prove that the PhD will be relevant to the profession. And guys, and also I would like to draw your attention to the fact that STEM subjects uh, list is a big one and it includes chemistry, physics, design and technology, math, information and uh, communications technology, computer science, economics, uh, geography. And this list is non-exhaustive. So if you believe that your profession may be on this list, uh, please uh, do check it before and making your application. So what are the results of our lab technician case? Um, so Ben is likely uh, to succeed because he should have scored 70 marks for his application and that will be 50 mandatory marks and 20 uh, tradable marks. And here they are. So first of all, he had a job offer, which is 20 marks at the appropriate skills level, 20 marks. English language requirement is also met. That's 10 marks. Altogether, that's 50 mandatory marks. Then that's another 20 marks for proving that he has BHD in STEM subjects. So altogether, that will be 70 marks for his points based system application. Let me give you another example. This will be the mechanical engineer case. 
Anna is a national of Cuba. She wants to work in the UK as a mechanical engineer. The UK-based home office recognized sponsor offered her a permanent job. They are willing to pay her £28,900 gross per year. Last month, we also know that she passed her B1 English language test. Will Anna succeed in her UK's new points-based system application? Let us again, as we did in Ben's case, let us go step by step. First of all, does she score 50 mandatory or non-tradable marks? We know that there is a job offer. So this is 20 marks for Anna. Then uh, the job offer is at the appropriate skills level. That's another uh, 20 marks for Anna because mechanical engineers are on the home offices list. And so this profession actually includes aerospace engineers, professional engineers, professional marine engineers, professional mechanical engineers. Also, Anna will get another 10 marks for passing the test at the level of B1. So she meets these requirements as well. So altogether, uh, when checking if she meets step number one, the answer is yes, because she managed to score 50 mandatory points. Now let us have a look at the second step where she needs to score a 20 non-mandatory or tradable marks uh, where she can mix and match uh, various requirements. Let us go through all the questions in order to see whether Anna can get these 20 marks. So the first question is, is the salary rate at least £25,600 or above the going rate for that profession? If it is, then that's 20 marks. If it, it is not, the second question you would like to ask is uh, if the salary at the minimum rate of £20,480. If it is not, the application will fail. If the answer is yes, then the next question to ask is, is the salary at the level of the going rate for that profession? If it is not, then the next question is, is it at least 75% from the going rate. If it is not, the application will be refused. And the last question to ask, is it on the shortage occupation list? If it is, then that's 20 marks. We know that Anna's proposed salary is higher than £25,600. However, uh, unfortunately, uh, the home office going rate, a minimum uh, sal uh, acceptable salary for this profession for mechanical engineers is at least £33,400, which is £16.47 per hour. The going rate is higher than the proposed salary. So for this application uh, to have viable chances of survival, uh, the salary should be at least a 75 percent of the going rate for that profession. So let us uh, make uh, the calculations for this particular case. As you can see from this example here, Anna's proposed uh, salary is above the 75 percent. It is actually 87 percent because uh, of uh, the going rate for this occupation. So this means that although Anna cannot score any points for her salary, she can still continue with the test and she can see if she can score these necessary 20 um, tradable marks elsewhere. The last question which we need to ask ourselves is Anna's occupation on the shortage occupation list. Again, guys, you can check this information if you request it at ukvisasuccess.com forward slash new PBS. As you can see, Anna's occupation is on this list and this means that she can score 20 uh, tradable points for the job offer which is on the shortage of occupation list. Let me summarize Anna's case. So as you may recall, at the beginning of this video, I explained that there are two types of marks. These are mandatory and tradable. They will need to score at least 50 mandatory marks and 20 tradable ones. So we know that she has a job offer from the Home Office Approved Sponsor, 20 marks. A job uh, is at the appropriate skills level, that's another 20 marks. And she passed her English language test, that's 10 marks. Altogether, that's 50 mandatory marks. And also her salary is at least 75% of the going rates. Uh, despite the fact that she cannot score any marks, she can still continue with the test. And because her job is on the shortage occupation list, that's 20 marks. So altogether, Anna managed to score 70 marks. And so this is it, my friends. This is all I wanted 
to discuss in today's video. I, I hope that after watching uh, this video, you'll be uh, able to very easily check if you can score the necessary 70 marks in order to answer the UK as a skilled worker. I would like to invite you to visit this page, ukvisasuccess.com forward slash more, where you'll find plenty of free immigration resources explaining various immigration rules. And I also invite you to subscribe to a new, very, very succinct and short newsletter where I'll be updating you on various changes in the world of UK immigration law. And also I will be sending various exclusive invitations to the members of UK visa success.com community. You'll only be able to get the software if you are subscribed to this newsletter. Have an amazing week, guys.